and I'll explain why um, in, a, in a little while. So a huge amount of things to celebrate that map to this map. The fact that in 2015, the first type of polio, there are in fact three types of polio, type one, type two, and three. So type two was eradicated in 2015. The whole world was certified polio free of type two wild polio. Type three, 2019, the whole world was certified wild polio free type three. So we are only now dealing with type one. Unfortunately, it's a tenacious little sod um, and it doesn't like to give up easily. But it is just type one that we are working for. Now, you may, I hope, have read numerous times recently, 25th of August, that this yellow blob, you don't need to worry that it's not in focus, it isn't. Um, it's just a, a, a map I pinched off the internet. Um, that yellow blob is what is make up of the World Health Organization's African region. And on the 25th of August this year, so just over a month ago, it was certified that that whole region was free of the wild polio virus. That is an absolutely amazing success story. That means that the WHO regions of the world, and there's six of them all together, the different colours on this map, the only region that has still got wild polio is this funny colour here, the sort of bluey green colour, um, because that's where Afghanistan and Pakistan sit. So they, that is just the one region left. And that means that 90% of the world's population live in countries that are free of wild polio. Again, an amazing success story. How much do you celebrate it in your club? How much do you celebrate it with your community, with your politicians at every level, with your school children? There's so much you could do. So, you know, the African region being polio free, have you celebrated it yet? If not, think about celebrating it. It doesn't matter that it, the date has passed, it's still a huge achievement for humanity and Rotary has been absolutely instrumental in that achievement. But you could perhaps link it to the fact that in February next year at Makerere University in Uganda, the first Rotary Peace Centre on the African continent will be opening to offer the updated certificate programme on the Rotary Peace Centres. That will be only the second centre in the world that offers a certificate programme, with the first one being Chula Longhorn in Thailand. So, you know, again, good links with Africa. So do you reach out in your communities to people with connections with Africa? They might have been born there, they might have worked there, they might be going out to work there. It might be that you've worked with Rotary Clubs out there on, on district grants or global grants or other projects. It might be that there are local charities that you could be working with. Reach out to that community, talk to them about the Rotary Polio story, see how you could help each other in their work, your work, not just on polio, but all of the other things. You know, the world is a very, very different place for everybody on this planet right now because of COVID. But there's actually a lot of similarities when you look back at the polio story. You know, <clears throat> back in the 40s and 50s, when there were major outbreaks, hundreds of thousands of people being infected, thousands and thousands of children dying, images of, of iron lungs, demand by car manufacturers to, to actually manufacture iron lungs to help people to breathe, swimming pools closed, schools closed, people not wanting to be in touch with other people. So many similarities between what we are now experiencing with COVID. So all more reasons to reach out and to talk to your community and link in what has happened. Because it is only by working together that we can end polio. And that doesn't just mean within Rotary, it means for every person on this planet, just like for COVID, there are major implications when people don't work together as we're all seeing and, and the situation we're back into now with lockdowns in various forms, you know, cases still going up I and mean, they've, they've reached over a million people have now died from COVID. 
we have to work together and we have to work together at every level. So, you know, going back to when Rotary first said to the World Health Assembly, we want you to work with us. That's when the Polio Global Eradication Initiative was conceived. Rotary has been the heart and soul of this right from the outset, and it still is today. When we first started, we worked with the World Health Organization, UNICEF, the US Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Now, we're all aware that in, in, for a number of years now, Rotary has been very, very lucky because the Gates Foundation match what we give. And, and right now, it's every pound that we get in Rotary for the polio campaign, whether it's us donating or it's monies that we raise, they will give us another two pounds. So one pound equals three pounds. And that's a really powerful message when you're fundraising. They're part of the initiative now, as indeed are Garvey, uh, uh, the Vaccine Alliance. They've recently joined that initiative because the world has become so aware of the importance of access to health care for all that the polio program has made the world realise that that is possible. And the joining in by Garvey is an important step forward. And of course, governments of the world and I'm sure you're all aware that the UK government, um, just before the last election, actually committed a further £400 million to the polio programme. And a lot of that is thanks to clubs like yours and mine, districts like yours and mine, Rotarians like you and me, actually communicating with our um, parliamentary representatives at whatever level, our local councils, our local um, uh, politicians or whatever, making them understand how important the polio programme is to their constituents and to their community. You know, it's very easy to say, oh, it doesn't matter anymore. It's just Pakistan and Afghanistan. But if we don't finish the job, that will mean that potentially within 10 years we'll be back to at least 200,000 children getting polio again every single year. Some will die, others will have a lifetime of the effects of polio. And we all know, um, I'm sure, of polio survivors who are now struggling with post-polio syndrome. And it's not just the person that gets the polio that's affected, it's their family, it's their community. They may or may not have a future. You know, it's difficult enough for polio survivors in Great Britain and Ireland. Imagine it if you're a polio survivor in, in an impoverished country in, in Africa or in India or any of the other countries where there isn't any support system whatsoever. So it's really important. There is no cure for polio but a very simple drop of vaccine, two drops of vaccine in a child's mouth could potentially save their lives. You know, this map is one I just copied today from the WHO website. This is the cases of COVID worldwide. We don't want our orange map to end up looking like this again with polio. And it isn't something that, that we're safe from in the United Kingdom at all. You know, if polio starts making a comeback, there is a very real danger that comeback will also include your country, my country. You know, it, it is a real possibility. So our polio program has been instrumental in helping with COVID-19. I don't know if you're aware but earlier um, in the year, the end of March, the, the polio mass immunizations that we're all familiar with, where literally every child in an entire country will be immunized in a, in a single day or over a few days. Most, if not all of those programs were put on pause because of the situation with COVID, the worry about transmission, the protection of the polio workers, the people being immunized, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm sure you can understand the reasons why it was put on pause. However, much of the polio program had to continue. We had to make sure that vaccines were still being produced, that they were being stored properly, that the cold chain was in effect, that the monitoring and surveillance network was still in place, that the call centers still operated, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And in addition to that, 
the contribution that many, many polio workers, many parts of the, the polio infrastructure have made to the COVID response in countries where there is no systems or there are poor systems to make response possible has been phenomenal. We should be really, really proud. It's one of the legacies of the polio programme beyond polio. I'm delighted to say that many of those immunisation programmes are already starting to resume. They started back in July, uh, Burkina Faso, Pakistan, Philippines, Sierra Leone, Nigeria, you name it. Those, those immunisation programmes are resuming. But it's not just the polio programmes that were put on pause. Many routine immunisations were also put on pause. And the polio programme is going to be a key part in how the global health system responds. You know, it, it's going to be a case of helping not just for polio, but also linking in to see how we can work for other immunisations. If and when the vaccine becomes available, what can happen with that? But don't panic, I'm not suggesting we're going to end up with an end COVID now campaign. It's just that, you know, we have to realise that because of the significant role that the polio programme, courtesy of Rotary, has played and is playing, it is having a major benefit on many, many other areas. And our polio work is absolutely key. The End Polio Now programme is absolutely key. And other bits link in with it.